for being on time. We really appreciate your, your time. And thank you for joining us this afternoon, this evening, uh, this morning, depending from where you are. Feel free to share in the chat where, uh, where are you from and uh, from where you're watching us. Uh, so welcome to this panel discussion, Women in Tech, Conversations on Leadership, uh, being hosted by Wiseline Academy. Uh, if, you, uh, if you have attended to any of our previous event courses, boot camps, uh, thank you very much for joining again. If you haven't, uh, don't hesitate to go and check it out in uh, uh, academy.wiseline.com. Uh, so today we're going to be having such a, an interesting discussion about around leadership with some of uh, very remarkable leaders from Wiseline. Uh, some, some kind of announcements. Uh, we do have this in webinar mode, so you're gonna be able to watch all of our panelists. You're, uh, you're free to uh, write in the chat. If you have any question, please use the questions and answer little box. We'll be free to, uh, to we'll be actually glad and happy to answer all of your questions, uh, just in case that we're running out of time or anything. And we uh, and we may need some space to continue the discussion. Uh, so I wouldn't like to uh, uh, delay this a little bit more. Just want to introduce myself. My name is Ricardo Tapia. I'm part of the Wiseline team. Uh, I'm leading the Diversity and Inclusion Office. Uh, if you don't know what Wiseline is, we are a software development and services company. Uh, uh, we are truly committed with diversity and inclusion. We believe that the more diverse and the more inclusive an organization is, the more competitive and the more rich we are. Uh, so said that, uh, I would like to hand in the mic to uh, Rachel Patchen. She's our program manager at Wiseman Academy. So please, Rachel. Hello, everybody. And thank you for being here today. My name's Rachel. I'm originally from Canada. But I recently found home here in Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico. I've got a master's in global affairs, and I'm really passionate about equitable, equitable social development and the role that tech plays in ensuring the hardest to reach are not left behind. I split my time between managing tech education programs here at Wiseline Academy and volunteering uh, in web design for organizations that I believe in. I'm also a part-time mom or a full-time mom, depends on how you see it. <laughs> to a dog and a kitty. Um, so thank you, Ricardo, for starting this session. Honestly, it's a pleasure to be here with you all today, and, and I'm really excited. When we were preparing for this panel, one of our panelists brought up an impactful point. Why do we keep talking about this industry as male-dominated? And why do most conversations about women in tech revolve around more representation? As women in the tech space, we want to shift that narrative and say, we're here. This is everyone's industry and we must normalize that idea in order for real change to take place. It's more than just taking up space. It's about supporting one another as we overcome challenges and pave our way to success. Here today, we have a panel of leaders, game changers and community builders who will continue this conversation and dig deeper, providing reflections on personal experiences, tips and best practices to help inspire you wherever you are in your leadership journey in tech. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our four wonderful WiseLine panelists. We have Miriam Godinez, the head of engineering here at WiseLine, who has over 17 years of experience in software development and testing. She is passionate about forming high performance teams of diverse disciplines distributed across the, across the globe. Her favorite thing to do is spend time with her family. She's married to her best friend and is a proud mom of a boy. She also loves to travel and read, and contrary to most, she actually enjoys public speaking and uses this strength of hers as a mechanism to inspire others. We also have Marielle Nilo, a software engineering manager and also a neurodivergent and neuroatypical with ADHD. Her superpower is that she processes problems in a unique way, usually thinking outside the box. As an empathic person, Marielle is a guardian, ensuring other people's way of processing emotions and information is respected. She has been adjusting to her differences all of her life, so she considers adapting and perseverance to be some of her best strengths. 
Next, we have Paulina Rivera, a software evolution engineer here at WiseLine with a diverse background. She loves challenges and continuous learning, and her experience ranges from quality assurance to full stack and DevOps. She's currently a backend developer and combines her time with people-oriented side projects. She's part of the Mexican tech community named PHP Mexico and an active speaker of diverse Latin American communities like WW Code and Tecno Latinas. Paulina's strengths include psychological safety, adaptability, and creativity. And last but definitely not least, I'd like to introduce Aide Martinez, a senior data engineer here at WiseLine. She has a graduate degree in artificial intelligence from the Kanazawa Institute of Technology in Japan and more than 10 years of experience in diverse tech fields. She's also the founder of De Cero a Ciencia de Datos, a programming academy focused on data science and machine learning. She loves sharing knowledge and often facilitates tech talks and workshops. However, her secret superpower is her incredible ability to clean. All right, everybody. Now that you've met our panelists, we will proceed with a moderated discussion session and end with an open Q&A period where you will have the opportunity to ask our panelists any questions you may have or share your experience as well. So to get the discussion started, I'd like to ask our panelists to reflect on your journey to leadership. Have you dealt with insecurities and vulnerability along the way? And if so, how did you overcome them? Um, is it okay if I begin? That would be lovely. Thank you, Aide. Thank you. Okay, um, so we're talking about vulnerabilities and insecurities. We're going straight to the point of this talk. I like that. Um, well, definitely through my career, uh, especially when I was um, really fresh into tech companies, I dealt a lot with um, insecurities and vulnerabilities, which I deal on my in in every day in every activity. But um, I think that when time goes by and you deal with different um, teams, with different um, leaders, and different opportunities, these insecurities and vulnerabilities are still there, but you are able to work with them or you're able to um, to ignore them on a way. Uh, but yeah, um, I think being a female in, a, in technology, sometimes it's really hard, especially at the beginning. I think um, being a female in technology is not about hard skills, but about soft skills. Thank you for sharing, Aide. There is also, oh, I'm sorry, Maria. No, no, no. Um, I, I just want to mention that I totally agree with, with, with Aide. Um, I think uh, vulnerability is one of the things that can start to be uh, kind of mixed with the emotional intelligence uh, topic, right? When, as women, I think we are more intent to, oh, I don't know if as a woman, but as individual, if you are more like inclined to start showing emotion and don't be afraid to say, today I don't feel well or things like that. It could be also that you start to be related that you need to start to grow like, or, or to level up your emotional intelligence, which I find very hard to believe because I think being vulnerable is one of the things that are actually showing off your emotional intelligence because you are strained uh, or you are brave enough to start saying I'm not okay. I'm not okay today, I'll do my best and I'm gonna get better anyway and I'm gonna overcome whatever that is happening. I think uh, that for me shows a great extent of emotional intelligence and um, specifically for me in my career during the technology industry, one of the things that I understood at the beginning or, or that I kind of like I don't know why I understand that way, but in my head was that I needed to kind of like don't show that I, I was stressed or don't show my emotions in order for me to get the next promotion for me because I needed to, to, to them to understand that I was able to handle things. But then I realized that showing emotion or, or, or feeling, feeling stress has nothing to do. Yeah, exactly. Like don't cry in public or things like that. Like I, 
obviously at, at some point I understood that showing emotion is part of being brave enough and it doesn't have to do with your capability to overcome things or the capability to support things or be resilient. It's just showing of your emotion. So yeah, for me, that was one of the things that, that and, and thanks Lady for bringing it up because I, I, I absolutely agree with you, being vulnerable and soft skills are one of the things that you need to, 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 to build up in, in a more quicker way in order for you to find a place in the technology industry. I don't know what do you think, but uh, I, I have this perception that the work environment is changing uh, because when I started like 17 years ago, it was quite different. Indeed, I, I, I felt like uh, I, I needed to, to be someone else instead of myself, that you need to pretend that you need to show that you are super professional and that you didn't have emotions at all. And that have been changing. I am seeing that right now, if we read about leadership uh, organizations that are successful and that are trying to build trust, we are getting used to these terms as like a, a, a whole person type of approach. And I really love that because it's not only opening like a doors for, for us as, as, as women, but a, for regular general human beings, because that's the truth. We are human beings and human beings are made by emotion and you cannot just pretend that you are okay when you are not. And uh, you, are, you are going to show that good or bad in, in work. And, and 10 years ago, it could be like it's something like unprofessional, but right now it's kind of like a, what it is. And I really, really love that because that make us to feel like uh, human beings and that you can bring your, your whole self to work. And I am so glad of seeing that change. Yeah, totally. Like the system right now, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, great. <laughs> I'm sorry, I thought that uh, there was something with the mic. Um, sorry, um, there's just two things that I wanna add um, in here, like Miriam said, uh, I think that for, from years to now, uh, we have been carrying this thing that we cannot be ourselves because being ourselves is kind of dangerous and that we have to be uh, like careful on being truth and being vulnerable out there and approaching ourselves in the work environment was something that was really on uncommon and if someone did it was uh seen as someone weak but now we are trying to change that game to to something normal or actually your strength like you could see that in, instead of being like that's my weakness no it's not your weakness it's actually one of your strengths and you can work on that and make a power out of it and that's something good and that we are trying to make that changing you know like all of us in here <laughs> the panelists in here we are working on that and also another thing that I did said is that um, that at the beginning of our career there is a phenomena of the one woman at the table and that's something that happens in tech that it's just one woman in the table uh, and the pictures, for example, not here at Wiseline, but it used to happen years ago. And yeah, here at Wiseline, there's a lot of, of women, of course, um, in my discipline, it's like half and a half, but we will talk about that later on. But um, in the industry, this phenomena still persists and we, we want to attack that, you know? And in women out there, you guys need to know that you are not taking a steps. I mean, you're not taking a space from no one. That space is yours, okay? That's just something that I wanna say. <laughs> I just wanna add, Rachel, sorry to interrupt you, but um, I just wanna add, um, according to the question, that when I begin in my career, when I begin studying a tech career, I was the only female in the room. When I began working in tech, I was the only female in my team. So I want to say that I felt that I have to show more than a male had, that I have to work 
more than a male hat because I had to prove myself only because of the way I looked and the gender I was born in, right? So I just want to add that because we're being uh, uh, super uh, optimistic and everything, but this really happens and I felt that. So it's completely normal. Thank you all for sharing. That was very insightful. And, and kind of building off that, I know we're talking about the industry changing a bit and vulnerabilities being more accepted. Um, so I'd love for you guys to reflect on maybe a little bit earlier on in your career, what's something that a leader did or a mentor did to make you feel like you could be vulnerable or, or that you could share, someone that inspired you to grow into leadership? I, I can... I can start answering answering that. Yeah, and when I was uh, still a individual contributor and I was working as a as a tester, I had a very brief time when I had a manager, and she was amazing because she showed me that you should not take yourself so seriously, and that's something and that's a value that I still uh, today I live by on, and he, she showed me that. The most important thing was what is going on with your family, right? Uh, she showed me that she showed me that at at some point on, yeah. of the, uh, on the day the job just ends, and what is important is what happening in your life. So sh she made me realize that you need to always look for a balance, and it's interesting that you're asking this question because I just thought about that like a couple of weeks ago because I, I was remembering that for a for for a time I, I forgot about those things and I actually go into into work mode uh, the whole day and and I end up being in, in burnout in the hospital. So somehow I I I wish that I had remembered her as I remember her now. And I I she was my mentor, let's say, for the first two years of my career. I've been in, in this industry for the last 13 years and still, oh, 12 years, I'm sorry, but still she's making this impact in me. Still, I, I have her on my Facebook and I enjoy seeing her. I enjoy that she has not changed a little bit, but she is right now, she's in such a high position right now because she knows how to balance her life. She knows that, just like Paulina was saying, like she's not asking for a place. She knows that she deserves one. She knows that she can have a tech, a tech and a high position and a high level management position and still be there for her family and still not take herself so seriously. So for me, she impacted my life in such a big way. And I can tell you that she was my manager for three months. And this is the effect that she had on me. So yeah, for me, that, that's the one that I have for sure. That's awesome, thank you for sharing. I wish mine um, was a, a female. Oh, I'm sorry, hi there. But I would say that it was a male actually. And I, I invite males to play this game too, that they could, um, they could change actually the game also. He was, um, I wanted to enter to Wise Life, but I couldn't at the at the first time that I tried to enter because my hard skills weren't, uh, you know, like the expected. So he talked to me and he saw something in me and he was like, I want to be your mentor then. And he was uh, an engineer manager in here, and I really appreciate him. He was my first mentor, and he showed me that people matter and that that work can be different from what I was from my background. And from that, something like my wire changed the whole thing. Like. I was like, oh my God, I'm a person. I'm not just a robot that codes and delivers, you know, like I'm someone valuable from, from the company and the company actually would be caring, I mean, taking care of me. And not only here, I know that there are um, some other companies that does that. And yeah, it changed, it changed how I felt about work and the job that I was doing.
Thank you, Paulina. Oh, I just have a short story. Oh, sorry, Rachel. I was gonna say, okay. go for it, Aide. Okay, I just have a, a short story. Uh, I think sometimes we don't realize uh, that we have uh, mentors all over the place. Um, it happened to me um, on the first company I worked as a software engineer. Um, in my first team, there was only male. And I received some harsh comments, uh, such as females belong in the kitchen and things like that, right? So my self-esteem was thrown to the floor. But then I, I seek for a change and I found another team where I had uh, some teammates that were females also, and that changed completely the story. And she didn't even, we never formalized like a mentor-mentee relationship. She was just sitting next to me doing her job. She was, I think she's five years older than me or something like that. And, and she's a strong technical uh, female. And I just, just by sitting next to her, uh, I, I can tell you that my self-esteem um, increased because I saw her, she, I could identify with her and she made me think and she made me believe that I could be a technical, a strong technical female. She didn't even say it once. She was just there working next to me. And another case in the same company, um, they held uh, like a female event every year and it was international. And it was here in Guadalajara in the expo or something like that in a hotel in front of the expo. And there was um, this um, leader, she was a female leader that gave such a nice talk, like it touched my heart and it was really, really changed. Um, like that was, that changed my life. But then I put her like in a pedestal. I don't know if that's the same word in English, I'm sorry. I put her there, but then I was, I was out there just, there was a break and I was outside of the hotel, just hanging out. And she was there having a smoke. I was having a smoke too. And I approached her and I, the first thing I told her was like, I wanna be like you when I grow up. And she was like, you're gonna be better than me and no one will stop you. And that, I truly felt that in my heart. So there, sometimes we don't need to establish like a, an official mentor mentee relationship. There's examples and motivation and inspiration everywhere. That's awesome. Thank you, Aide. And I think building off of that, uh, for the people who are looking for a more like official or, or established mentor-mentee relationship, how important do you think it is, one, to have a mentor, someone you look up to, and two, what are some tips or steps that you can give people who might be looking for that and, and trying to seek that out? How do you go about that? And I think let's start with Miriam. Yes, I would like to share on that because early in my career, I do remember my very, very first job after uh, college, and I got a mentor that was the most technical savvy uh, person at the team, but um, he was a good mentor. He, he struggled, you know, in the sharing knowledge, and by the way, he also affected me a lot in terms of self-esteem because he was always telling me that uh, I was smart. I was not smart enough that uh, I, I needed to change this and that. And I was I, I was kind of like a loss in terms of what to do correctly in order like to gain uh, his respect. So from there, first I, I thought that I, I needed any other mentor, but through my career, what we need is uh, mentors that care about you and they can teach you some things that you are looking for. So. Um, having a mentor for me ha ha hasn't worked in terms of like a structured programs, you know, because that uh, meet and match type of exercises uh, for me, it's kind of like awkward. It hasn't worked for me. I don't know if for other people ha it has worked, but uh, it's, it's about chemistry. It's like any other relationship. So don't be afraid to end up a relationship with a mentor that doesn't fulfill your needs, that doesn't... Uh, match what you are looking for. I think it's super, super important to feel empowered 
to do that because I spent like uh, one year and a half with this mentor that was not only not helping me, but indeed was uh, damaging myself as a person, as a professional. So uh, I have had tons of different mentor mentors through my career. And indeed, uh, I, I have been using for me and for my teams this uh, learning model, which you can Google it. It's uh, the 70 20 10 learning model. And 70 pro once that you once that you have decided to develop a skill or something that you want to learn, you need to spend 70 of the time doing, 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 hands on. 20% you need to learn from network, which could be like a mentor. And only 10%, yes, you, you heard correctly, only 10% of that time it's about theory. And if you see like a real life example, it's almost backwards. We are like reading a lot and trying to digest concepts and, and we don't care too much about mentors and sometimes we don't have enough time in order to practice. So say that it's super, super important to get a mentor. So what I have done in order to find mentors, first, I decide what is the skill that I would like to develop or what, what I want from a mentor. That's the first step. You need to have that really clear. Otherwise, it's like a, when you are just trying to get a relationship, but you still don't really understand why. You know, you're having one person, another, and it's not working, and it's not gonna, it's not gonna work. I think because you just don't know why are you trying to do that. So first step, it's like to have that really, really clear. Second, it's like a, like an experiment. Just just try it out. Uh, what what I do is like a, I I think like hmm, looks like this person is something I can learn from. So I approach that person and right now I'm not as shy as it used to be but if you are in your early stages and you don't feel like it's so confident to say hello this is me and of course I just don't say like this is me and I would like you to be my mentor it doesn't work like that way but I mean if you are extroverted enough in order to do that so be it but I, I just present myself and say like, here I am. Uh, this is what I do. This is what I like to do. I read something about you. I know a little bit about you. And I try, you know, like uh, to, to, to start the relationship. And it's super important also. It's, 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 a, it's, a, two, it's a two ways type of uh, like in any relationship. It's not like a, I'm going to be just consuming from my mentor. It's you need to exchange something right so in in early stages i could offer to do some pro bono type of work right i'm in project a but i know that you need some sort of help for project b i can volunteer to do that so i can get close to you and start that relationship so indeed i i can think in some in, in some occasions where i didn't have a formal mentor mentee type of relationship but after some months we could say like uh, we were mentor mentee. Why? Because I was learning from this uh, person and I, I was in some way also uh, extending some favors uh, for, for that person in, in, in terms of uh, like uh, have some job in connections. And another thing that worked for me was like, uh, if I don't feel confident enough, you know, like uh, to get there and introduce myself, you can ask someone else to make the introduction. So that has worked uh, as well. So it's like, uh, you know, I would like to know that person because I want to achieve that or sometimes even in order to find a job. I can tell you that at least two, three of my mentors help me to find my next job. So it's super, super important to build those connections, not only because you are le learning something new and you're and you are learning from a person, but because you are building relationships that in the near future are going to help you to maybe get your next role. That was super helpful. Thank you, Medium. And I think kind of tied to that, asking for things can be hard. It's, it's not easy for anyone. Um, and I think especially, in these journeys to leadership, there are some pretty key things you have to be confident asking for, like asking for a raise or negotiating salary or asking for more responsibility, a, a larger scope of work. What tips might you ladies give for people who maybe struggle with that or, or haven't done that before and it's their first time? I can jump a little bit there. Um, 
one of the things that I know when I'm asking something is that I deserve it. Is that it's in my right to ask for whatever I'm asking. And also I I think about how am I gonna ask for for, for the thing that I'm asking. Um, I see myself as someone that is contributing and, and is doing impact on the company or whatever when I'm participating in, in, in whatsoever, right? So I see myself as someone that is bringing something to the table. So usually when I'm asking something is because I already build up something that I think can contribute in making my value proposition and also asking for something that may impact that value proposition that I'm doing. For example, if I'm, ask, if I'm asking for a higher salary, I'm gonna say, look, this is what I'm done. This is the things that I can do. This is the potential that I have, that I already know that I have helped me to grow up as, to, to grow as an engineer, as a manager or whatever I'm doing in order for me to start also like scaling the things that I'm doing. You know, because the more that I grow, the, the higher the salary that you have, and the more that you connect with other people, you, you are creating a higher proposition of value to, to whatever that you are doing. So for me, it will be that each time that I'm asking something, I already know that I deserve what I, and, and I already know why I deserve it. So one of the key things is saying why. When you ask for something, you also should explain the why the why behind, the what and the why, right? And the how is, well, give me a higher salary, give me this, give me that. But that's something that has really worked for me because there's no way that they can actually like uh, ask me something that I don't know because I'm, I believe in it. I know the why. So it's just like flexibility in, in, in knowing how I have to present the narrative or whatever, but the baseline is there. So for me, the advice is know the why know that you, you deserve it, make an in, introspection why you deserve it, and there's no way that this could turn around. Thank you, Maria. Would anyone else like to share from our panelists about their experience? I just want to add, um, I, I posted something on the chat. Um, it's like, Sometimes hierarchy makes us feel small, but at the end of the day, we're all humans. Um, hierarchy is in every workplace, you know, um, some, some of it's needed for titles and stuff. But at the end of the day, we're, we're humans. And sometimes um, we don't realize that the no as an answer, it's already there. You know, like we, we have 50-50% option. Like the no is already there, but the yes can happen. We don't know. As Marielle says, um, we have to build our request, right? Don't, don't just ask for asking. We have to build our request. But also, um, if we, um, I sometimes say it, says that um, people that ask for things are people that really, really, really want those things. So attitude and, and the need of I don't know, being better or having a higher salary or having something, the need, it's what makes you ask. So um, just realize, like Mariel was saying, realize and, and see your request, but also see your need. And the need will make you ask and make you go places also like with attitude we sometimes think uh, on all the worst case scenarios from when we're asking but we never think of the best case scenarios so we should consider those scenarios too and if we have a no just okay thank you and ask someone else it's not a failure totally I, and I, I i would like to add just uh, something uh, into that. It's that sometimes even you can ask, why not? If you feel comfortable doing, why? Because that way you are going to learn for the next time what could be missing. So if you feel comfortable doing that, just ask, yeah, why not just now? And you can learn something from that. And uh, there's another thing that I just thought that is actually really important. I figure that sometimes you are not asking the correct question. 
you think that you are asking the correct person, but in reality, no. So know your stakeholders well. Like do an ex stakeholder mapping where you know that maybe the information that you are asking is it's not up to the person that you're asking. So he he's going to maybe say no, but not because he doesn't want to, maybe because he can't. And maybe he doesn't know why, or doesn't know how to make, make this work. So I figure that, that it usually we go like, well, my, maybe my, my, the person that I'm reporting is the one that, that is going to help me. But remember, again, if you're a manager, you will know that there are going to be times or, or, or whatever, just as a human, there's going to be times that you've been asked things that you can just, you, you can do, and you're going to uh, even, eventually say, no, I can't. So it's the same thing. And just don't give up with the, as Aide and as Miriam is saying, don't give up with the first no. Think why is a no. Maybe if, if you don't want to ask the why, maybe just make an introspection and just think it might be that you are not asking the correct person. Yeah, I just want to add that because I, I found that really uh, important because that's some of the cases in, in, my, in my perspective. Thank you, Maria, and to everyone who shared. Uh, we have an audience question that popped up and I want to make sure we get to it. Uh, what are the soft skills that you think women should have or are, are essential for women starting out their career? Uh, this one said non-tech, but I think we can talk about it in general. I think soft skills are translatable across industry, so. If you don't mind, I, I, I can't, uh, yes. <laughs> well, I, I think communication, it's key. For wherever you go, even if it's a professional, in life, whatever, communication is key. And communication, it's a huge field. So I will say, <coughs> sorry, that you need to um, be able to be comfortable, you know, like in conflicts, how to communicate that, how to provide feedback, how to put your thoughts in some structure that you can share with someone else. And you can also uh, be able to adapt to different audience. It's not the same when you communicate to upper management, to some sort of stakeholders, to peers, when you are leading. So as I said, communication is like a huge space, but you need to understand what, where are you standing so that you can decide with it's kind of like a, that a specific within communication that you are struggling on. And I think that for that, you can rely on a mentor, you can rely on your manager, you can rely on your peers. So you can get feedback in terms of like how I can improve my communication. And there, there's tons of trainings, tons of different books. And I think that we can talk like for hours about this topic, but definitely communication, it's something that we need to have an eye on. It's super, super important. And no matter where are you at your career, you are gonna need it. So that's, that's key. And uh, something that it's um, also super important, it's to have goals. Because I can tell you that the time where I have struggled the most, it's where I don't have goals. So I don't have priorities. And for me, it's almost impossible to decide. So when, once that you have uh, some sort of goals, it's going to be easier to uh, make decisions. And you are going, I mean, once you have that goal, that goal some, some sort of like a draft or clear, you are going to be able to start uh, depict some middle steps. And don't feel, don't feel like you are trapped for a goal. You can change it. But what is important is in the face of life that you are living or what you are trying to pursue, just translate it to a, some sort of a goal that is going to give you perspective and something uh, that it's super important, it's intention. It's not the same, you know, like you are moving and maybe you are moving forward. But if you are, if you are lacking intention, you are going to miss totally the point. So that is why it's super important. I, I don't care if you have like a super um, uh, huge goals or you have like a super small goals. And by the way, you don't need to compare with anyone. Uh, for someone else, your goal could be like a small. I don't care. As long as for you, it's clear and it's what you want. Remember, it's your life. 
it's your career and make your goals uh, your, your, your thing, I mean, and don't care about what the people will say about them. So once that you have that, you are going to be able to put intention into that. And it doesn't matter what your goal is, you are going to be able to see some sort of pro progression and you can measure that. Otherwise, you know, you're going like, okay, yes, moving, but with, without intention, indeed, sometimes can be like, a, oh, I don't know what I'm doing, but you're doing terrific. You have a, like a, the life that uh, every single human being wants, but who cares? If you don't put that intention for you, it's, it's going to be like a meaningless. So communication and clear goals. I, I will suggest that. Totally. And I would add something because my career started, I, I, I mean, I have had an early career because I graduated like two years ago or something like that. So yeah, I totally relate to that because my first year um, when I recently graduated, I was like, I just want to be a better professionist. And I didn't have any goals and uh, I moved from city to city, change my career. That's why I have a, a really interesting background in tech because I didn't actually know, I, I didn't actually, yeah, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I just, was, I was like, ah, let's do that. I would take that challenge and I, why not? I would take that. But um, yeah, I, I didn't have the soft skills that I have right now. <laughs> I was just like um, both feeling somewhere like and and one day I was just like what am I doing like I know that I have a good job and that I do stuff but what is the point point? and I remember that I took a, a workshop and designing your life and but I took that workshop when I entered here. And then I, did, I was like, okay, what I wanna do <laughs> with my life and maybe not looking forward like in, how do I see myself in five years? But maybe like, what is the path that I wanna take in my career? And that's when I decided like, okay, uh, maybe these two, three years, I wanna be a, an engineer, but in the future, I wanna be a manager. And that's when I discovered that I needed a mentor. <laughs> and that's when I proposed to Mariel. <laughs> and she said, yes. <laughs> and we've been together for four months. <laughs> So yeah, and actually she has helped me a lot and most of the soft skills that I've gained, I actually am thankful to her because she's been a role model to me and all of a lot of wise line females in here. <laughs> yeah, there's tons of love in here. <laughs> so yeah, and another thing though, that I would like to add is realize that we need help. It's something that can help us um, when we begin in the career, not having this attitude that I, I will do it everything by myself. Like here in Wiseline, we have this, that we are not an island. We need people. We need people and not only just for networking, like we, we need to, we need others to grow and they need us to grow also. So that's something that I also want to add as a soft skill. And I I just want to mention that that thank you, Paul. I in this mentor thing, just to close up, uh, I think as a mentor, you will you will want to do other other mentors because you are actually gaining a lot of knowledge each time that you mentor, as, as Miriam mentioned. There's like a switch that is happening, that is passive, that you are not actually like, uh, maybe like uh, speaking of, about that, but uh, I'm learning a lot of uh, about you also. So thank you. But coming back about the soft skills and coming back what you mentioned in Westline is that when I joined, uh, when I joined Westline, I realized how important uh, soft skills were in, in my career. I, I always knew it, but I never gave, gave them the space and the respect that they deserve. So 
I realized because Westline is the kind of company that will put you, you, you first before anything else. And I remember one of the things that was really like a, a, a deal breaker for me was when uh, my manager started asking me, as me as a manager, how I was. And she told me that I was, I was the base of the move and I was the base of the emotional intelligence that my team can have. And I needed to work on it. I needed to be fine. I needed to feel okay. I needed to build up a motivation, resistance, resilience, and things like that and be okay. And my mental health was a priority because that would be the thing that I would be transmitting to my team. That would be the thing as a role model that my team can perceive. And she told me like right now, mental health is something that you should have as a priority because that's, those, those are the times that luckily now we are living and we realize that mental health is really a core value that we need to help, uh, all, all the engineers need to have as a priority. So for me, it was really amazing. And I, I'm really thankful that I found Westline and Westline is one of my, uh, now, it's part of my life because I found myself in a company where I can be authentic and I can actually say that I have ADHD and nobody cares about it and, and everyone is like, I don't understand, so let's work as we used to. But we care, we care a lot and we are learning yeah. from it. No? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, 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 exactly. They don't get in the sense that they don't, they are not worried that it's going to affect in some, in some way. Actually, they're like, can you teach me how to, what is that and how can I help? and I just feel so lucky. And I think uh, being in a company that is really according to your values really shows you which are the soft skills that you should have. Really shows you how, what are the soft skills that you need to work on because the company is working already with those soft skills uh, as a living entity. So you are trying to like just jump into that train and just build up just those, those, those soft skills, which actually in West, like we don't call them soft skills, we call them power skills, because we believe that those, those skills are the ones that are kind of like potentially uh, ex, exposed, exposing everything that you are working in your hard skills. So I don't know, I, for me, uh, that's what I have found here that I never found in any other company. The value of working your soft skills as a, one of the top priorities that you have in your career. Awesome, thank you, Maria. All right. We've got some time and I'd love to open up the floor to some audience questions. So based on what you've heard today or what you came in here with, if you guys would like to post in the chat or I think in the little question box, any questions you'd like our panelists to answer, now is your time. While we wait for a question, um, I would like just to add that um, it's okay to make mistakes, as I already mentioned in the chat. It's never wrong to make mistakes. And we are so afraid of making mistakes everywhere in personal life, in professional life. But it's never wrong to make mistakes. You know, a mistake is something that you didn't plan for. It's not like you're planning to screw something. So it's never wrong to make mistakes. And I think um, the best... Um, lectures or the best uh, knowledge I've got is from mistakes. Uh, so yeah, it's never wrong to make mistakes. And also it's not wrong to feel bad or to, or to have a bad day and take a bad day for yourself, you know, like a sick day or something. It's also okay to feel all of the negative emotions that we try to run away from, it's not wrong. It's never wrong to feel them also. And I think as part of the soft skills or power skills um, for someone beginning their career or in any area, I think it's really important to learn to uh, name our emotions. What am I feeling? So we can analyze ourselves and also um, find patterns so we know what we're feeling, what triggered this, how can I about avoid this negative emotion and promote the positive emotions. All emotions are positive, by the way. Anyways, it's really important to uh, name our feelings. I think that's key. And also, as I mentioned before, uh, being a stillborn, 
it's really, really important because um, when you, like Miriam was saying, when you have intention, when you have passion, when you know where you're going, the path almost builds itself. And when you have an intention, you're going to be stubborn because you know what you want to do. And I can almost say that nothing will stop you. Nothing will stop us from getting what, where we want to get when we really want to get there. So yeah, uh, exactly how to motivate yourself. Yeah. Thank you, Aile. Paulina, did you have something to add? Yeah, uh, we have a question from David. Uh, it says, as a man, what can we do to help making our society more inclusive? Um, I don't know about society, <laughs> but in tech, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but um, yeah, maybe this could be like, um, like translated in other areas, you know? But um, making, I mean, treating women as you treat men in general is just like with respect. Yes, that's just the same thing. Um, the first mentor, informal mentor that I have in developer, he was a developer and he's my best friend. And he never doubted myself. Like he was like, I'm gonna, show you how you, you, you will use this framework. And he never told me, have you ever like doubt yourself to not do this and go to the kitchen and just get married and, and saying something like that? He never thought about it. He would never say something like that. And I know that there's people that says that, you know, like, because there's misogyny out there. Just treat women as you would treat your guys <laughs> that's it <laughs> that's the that's the only thing you know it's pretty easy yeah sometimes we uh, i don't know if you've ever experienced that i'm sure you have but uh, a man arrives and there's uh yourself as a female surrounded by males and then a male says oh sorry i, I can't say those words because there's a female here and it's like why not i'm not gonna cry i'm not gonna shout just treat me like someone else Right. And I also think that um, as a male in the tech industry or whatever, um, as Paulina said, uh, just respect. Treat us as humans. We're humans. We're not like um, some vulnerable things. We're humans. We're strong. We're stronger than you sometimes. But yeah. <laughs> awesome. Miriam, did you want to touch on that one? This this exactly the same question or the next one? It's because I was reading the next one. <laughs> Sorry. You can touch on the next one. OK. Um, wow, this is a hard one. Wait, because... should we read it out? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if everyone can see it. I don't know if it's just us. But uh, OK, I'll, I'll I can read it. Read it. It's, what is the best way to promote yourself in a non-arrogant way? Oof. Wow, this is hard because in Mexico, we live still in a society when we have some bias. So it's really, really hard, you know, like uh, to pretend A, but don't be B and it's confusing. So for me, it's about like a, just being yourself and not pretending. And it's super complicated because I have read books where the bias are different from women and men. So you can say exactly what a man said, but if you are a woman, that for me, it's, it's kind of like a crazy, you know, it's, I just don't get it. It's, it's crazy. But you are saying exactly the same words, but you are perceived different. So I don't have the answer. I, I don't have the answer to that. I just suggest to work on yourself in terms of what type of person do you wanna be and be that person. So it's super, super uh, impossible to make other people to think differently. So you cannot behave according to people's expectations because I think that it's gonna be an endless game. So it's super important to 
work on you, recognize yourself, uh, introspection, therapy. For me, therapy has been key. So even at my age, it's like, oh my gosh, I thought that I was um, in a point where I feel like a super mature, super self-confident, and I understand myself and looks like a, it's not. I am doing some things that are totally different from uh, what I am for real, just because for years I have been doing that in order to pretend B, and so it's super complicated. So it just don't focus that much in pretend something. Be yourself, love yourself, and work on yourself, invest in yourself. And I, I, that will be my, my advice. I don't know if someone else wants to add more because I would like to learn on that topic as well. I, I think what you said was was really true. And I know I'm the moderator, but I, I wanted to add my two cents. And I think in even by asking that question, it's it's demonstrating that this is not about your arrogance. It's about how other people are perceiving you. And I don't think that anyone should make them smell themselves themselves <laughs> themselves smaller to make other people be more comfortable, it, especially if it has to do with like making your achievements smaller, making your accomplishments smaller, making like what you do smaller, be proud. And, and the people who are really there for you, who are in your corner will be proud of you too. That's my two cents. <laughs> I know Mariela, you're raising your hand, but I read a tip this week and I just wanna share it with you. Oh, um, so um, see when someone um, comes to you and tell you, hey, you're successful, or hey, you're amazing, what's your reply? Analyze your reply. If your reply is like, of course, of course I'm not, it's because you think you're humble. But what could be the right answer to that? And sometimes we even like joke with it, like, yeah, I'm super awesome, I know, I'm super cool, but it's because we don't even believe it ourselves. The right answer is, thank you for your compliment. I'm glad you see it that way that's it that's it and i think that if we begin looking at our answers when we hear compliments we will begin um behaving as if as we believe who we are we know who we are if someone is telling me i'm successful or i'm amazing or i'm super smart or um whatever yeah just be like thank you thanks for noticing it i i'm indeed no, that's not true. But just thank you. That's it. That's it. Trying to be humble make us less empowered. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Well, we are out of time. Uh, I think Christy, if you want to share your screen and share share the the what's it called the QR code, I'll read some closing notes. And then if anyone wants to stick around, I have one final question for our panelists. But First, I want to thank you all, our panelists and our audience members, for being here today and participating in this conversation on leadership. I hope we all walk away from here feeling motivated, empowered, and ready to take on our leadership journeys and take them to the next level. I want to encourage everyone today to continue this conversation and just know that we're not alone. The best way to ensure the success of our community of women in tech is by supporting one another. A little promo, we have a LinkedIn group um, with WiseLine Academy called Women in Tech. And there's a big group of us there already, but we're always looking for more. So if you'd like to join, you're more than welcome to. Um, and then I also want to do a mini promo for the upcoming Women in Leadership Certification Program, which is launching November 4th, which has been developed and created to help foster your career growth. Um, so I really hope to see you all there. If you guys don't mind filling out this feedback survey, um, that'll really help us in, in hosting future panels because we hope to do so. And then for anyone who wants to stick around, I have one last question for our panelists. If there was one thing that you hope the people in the audience today do as a result of our conversation, what would it be? I'm gonna nominate somebody. I think. I'm nominating you to take this one on. I think you're on mute, I think. Sorry, I have hot corners and I was trying to unmute myself and I blocked my computer twice. <laughs> and now I'm red. Um, okay. 
if there was one thing that I will take from here, um, there, there's been awesome um, stories. There have been awesome advices from everyone in this talk. So I think um, the only thing we need to know is that we just need to be who we are. We just need to live the life that we want to live, either in tech or not in tech. Um, we just need to uh, follow our heart, our feelings and whatever to what we want to do and never let no one make us feel like we can't or that we're wrong. If we are wrong, well, technically in, in hard skills, I know it's wrong, but never let no one make you feel less. Build an armor to protect you from what you think from yourself and that no one can change it ever. And when you feel bad and when you feel that you're not as good as you think and things like that, look at yourself through the eyes of someone that loves you. How would someone that loves you look at you? And how, how would someone that loves you think of you? So just do that and see if we all look at ourselves with the eyes of the people that love us, we would treat us differently. And that's it. Ade, who would you like to nominate to give to give their last tip? The one thing somebody would like or you want the audience to do as a result of our talk today? Um, I will nominate Paulina. Oh, okay. So, oh, <laughs> the dog's also talking. Okay, so I would say women, um, own your voice, be loud, be gross if you want. Be lady if you want, be whoever you want to do, like do whatever you want to do. Take your space. You are not like, that's the most important thing. Knowing that you are not like, asking for any space, you deserve the space and you deserve it. That's the thing that I would say to the female out there. Thank you, Paulina. Who would you like to nominate? Miriam. <laughs> oh, I thought I, the idea was going to do the closing. Looks like a, it. All of us are going to be closing. Okay. Well, I I will suggest to don't take yourselves like that seriously, and remember that software it's eating the world. So, it is awesome to be in tech by this time. So consider that we are so lucky of having the opportunity to do something that can change the world. We are solving problems that touches uh, human beings and are changing the reality and the way we live. That is so cool. I really, really like that. And I would like to spread the word that being in tech, no matter if you are women, the men, I don't care. It's super cool. Yes, it could be challenging, but it totally worth it. And you can do it. Just be aware of your needs, be aware of your goals and be surrendered for an awesome network. You are not alone. And I'm not going to say like, yes, we are here for all of you because we don't even know you, but you are surrounded by people. If you are working in a, in a place, try to find out someone that can help you. You are not alone. If you don't have, if you have no one in the place you are working, look in an external community. I mean, right now it's a lot of different sources where you can learn from, you can leverage from. Don't go by this way by your own. Get some sort of support. And really, 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 if you are in tech, just have fun because at the end of the day, uh, as I said, it's so uh, cool to be to be at, at, at this uh, at this industry and just ask for help if you if you need some sort of uh, if you need some sort of help. You are not alone and enjoy 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 the way. And I do nominate Maria. 
<laughs> Pretty sure there's no one else. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, what I was going to say before, it, it really comes down to this. Go and find tools that help you to find yourself. I am remarkable too. Uh, this this workshop that uh, Google created really will find you to find your inner strength. So I would say like build up a reality that works for you. Build a reality that works with what will make you feel happy. What will make you feel fulfilled. What will make you feel authentic. We all deserve to be happy. We all deserve to be authentic. We all deserve to be motivated. We all deserve to wake up every day and enjoy what we do. And that's on you. You, you, you just, you have to work to build that. So working in a technology, working in some, in a software industry has given me that. And I hope that you find a place that where you can also find, uh, authenticness and peace and, and just love what you do. So I think the key that we have all been speaking of is have passion for what you do. And I think software is a really good opportunity to find passion, but that's up to you. And I hope that you find it. So that's it. Come back to you, Rachel. Back to me. Thank you to everyone here. Uh, thanks to the audience for sticking around. Thank you to our lovely and wonderful panelists. You guys are inspiring and yes, my eyes are a little wet. I don't know if it's allergies, but my heart has been touched and I hope our audience members feel the same. So thank you to everyone for your time, for sharing, for opening up, for asking questions or for just being here. You're awesome. Bye everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye guys. Bye.